What would you do if I told you there was a disease whose name in Greek means poverty of flesh, and that if you live past the age of 80, there is up to a 50% chance that you're going to experience it. This disease is called sarcopenia, and you may not have heard of it for a good reason. It was only really considered a disease from around 2016. See, once upon a time, it was thought that our muscles are just there to help us move around and to help support our posture. But it turns out skeletal muscle is actually the largest organ of our body, capable of releasing cytokines in response to stress, which has implications for our immune health, metabolic health, and just general physical health and function. So having both enough and good enough quality muscle is way more important than we first thought. So what is sarcopenia? Well, as I mentioned at the start, the name comes from Greek origin, but essentially it is the presence of both low muscle strength and low muscle mass, either in response to the natural aging process or due to an acute period of stress. And the way that clinicians diagnose sarcopenia is through testing those two variables. So usually muscle strength will be tested through hand grip strength with a score of less than 27 kilograms for men considered low hand grip strength. And for women, this is anything less than 16 kilograms. Even simpler tests like a chair stand test can be used. This is where you get someone to stand up from a chair five times with their arms across their chest. And if it takes a person any longer than about 15 seconds to do five stand it also indicates that they may have low muscle strength. Then typically, if someone demonstrates low muscle strength, they are tested for their muscle quantity or their muscle mass. And this is typically done through imaging. So something like a DEXA scan, for example, that you may have heard of before, can give you a pretty accurate measure of the amount of muscle mass on your body. And what they would typically do is they would sum up the amount of muscle mass that you have on both of your legs and your arms. Now, if this amount is anything less than 20 kilograms for males and 15 kilograms for females, then you're considered to have low muscle mass. And if you're found to have low muscle strength and low muscle mass, well, you're considered to have sarcopenia. But what are the risk factors for developing sarcopenia? One of the more obvious risk factors is age, and that is because after the age of 30, we typically lose an average of between five and 8% of our muscle mass per decade. Now that is an average, and between ages 30 or 40, it's hardly noticeable, but as we get past age 50, it does start to drop off at quite an alarming rate. However, you can get sarcopenia at any age, and there are certain things that you might want to look out for, like chronic diseases, having certain chronic diseases like COPD, heart disease, diabetes, they increase your risk of getting sarcopenia, and also just chronic inactivity, not doing a lot for long periods of time. So that's the risk factors, but what are the consequences? If you were to develop sarcopenia, what would happen to you? Well, as a result of having low muscle mass, you are naturally less stable in your posture, so you're more likely to fall over, and as you get older, that is a major problem and can lead to things like fractures. There is also a link between having sarcopenia and your risk of various chronic diseases, cardiac diseases, even neurological conditions. Also, as you get older, if you have to go to hospital, which a lot of us will do at some point in our lives, you're likely to have a worse outlook after your discharge than someone who doesn't have sarcopenia. And it's also likely to affect things like post-surgery recovery. And perhaps the nail in the coffin, if you'll pardon the pun, is you have a general increased risk of all-cause mortality, essentially dying from any cause. Not to mention the more obvious effects of just being weaker in general life is that you are more likely to lose your functional independence, which will make it more likely that you'll have to rely on long-term care as you get older. Now, I mentioned that sarcopenia is really common, especially in the older age bracket, but there are ways that you can prevent it altogether. And there are a few actions that you can take, preferably starting now to get the best benefits. And what the research says is the biggest factor that you can influence in your risk of getting sarcopenia is strength training. Quite simply, you can fight against the natural aging process of your muscles by constantly trying to increase their size. And in fact, the more muscle size that you gain in earlier life, the more likely you are to then retain that in later life. Now, all the research on this pretty much recommends that as a bare minimum, you're doing two days a week of strength training. Now, as long as there's nothing obviously wrong with your training, this amount will pretty much guarantee that you will never experience sarcopenia. However, if you do any less than this or nothing at all, expect to start losing muscle mass from age 30 and then have that loss accelerate from ages 40 and particularly after age 50. The good news is the research shows there isn't a specific exercise that you need to do. In fact, free weights, machines, body weights, literally just putting your muscles under a high degree of tension at least twice a week will do just fine. The other thing that you can do to help lower your risk of getting sarcopenia is to focus on your diet. Now, malnutrition is one of the biggest risk factors for sarcopenia. Luckily, in the Western world, we have to worry about calorie quantity a little bit less, but we do have to think about our calorie quality. And this does matter when it comes to your risk of sarcopenia. In fact, you can still have a high amount of body fat 
but a low amount of muscle mass. In fact, this has a name, it's called sarcopenic obesity. So as well as your training, the composition of your calories has been shown to be pretty important. So that means consuming around two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And there's evidence to suggest that even going above that might be beneficial as you get really into your older age. So thanks for watching everyone. And as always, I will see you soon in another video.